I'll run through this one quickly. When small they are or smooth they are, they're touching tongues. With your threads touching each turn that you put on. If not, practice it a lot because for the next fly, it's crucial. By the way, there's wee bits of rope here. Well, well, we'll pass that on after you finish this first play. Otherwise, they'll try to tie with you, and that's not what yeah. they're supposed to do. Now, why have you started so far back from the eye? Everything finishes at the eye. When you're tying a fly, if you want a nice small head, start back to the eye. That way, when you finish your materials and your hackle goes on last, there's going to be a a shoulder handle on this one. Then it takes it right up to the end, whip finish, job done. And you're getting less build up there, you're creating a small head. Gotcha. You don't want a bulky big butcher's cat. Here. Does anyone fold the hackles? Something like that. Does anyone do that? Oh. Some yeah. do, some I don't. Right? I've seen it. But soft fly hackle fold, we've done it on soft tackles. Yeah. You're folding a hackle, where all the fibers are pointing in the same direction. This is a very old so fashioned way of tying a hackle. Right, take your hackle. It's a henny cock, it's not quite a full cock. No, it's not as brisk as a full cock. It's a bit softer. You don't need much to hold them in position, it's just to hold them. Because each turn is tightening on the material you've already done. So one or two turns to hold the material in, no bother. And the second, I'm going to tease up some wool and dub it. music to play, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm no singing. Hey, oh, see what I'm doing here. Turn it up and always in the same direction. Anchor down the stuff we've already put on. Whenever you think you've got enough dubbing, by the way, pick out what you think you need and put half of it back. You'll normally find you've still got too much. I've heard that before.
This is the old fashioned way of palming the hackle. Nowadays they tie it in at the head, tie it back, no, tie it into the stub, and then tie it back to the tail and use your rib to anchor it down. I think that's atrocious. It's really bad. You see the thread beginning to go into that spare, that bare bit of hook? Yeah. Come on, specs. And that's the Palmer Hackle on, but with the rib, you want to tie this opposite direction. And this it, rib is a oval? It's gold oval. Gold oval. Gold oval tinsel. Why do you tie it the opposite direction, Brian? It weaves through the hackle fibers, it catches the stem right onto the body of the hook and it protects your palmer hackle because we all know how sharp trout's teeth are. Who wants to take the time to trouble to tie a fly and have it ripped apart on the first fish? So what did you just do there? A little rush? Oh yeah, that's a wee bit of velcro. Okay, you're fluffing it up a little bit. We tied a bit of Velcro. Oh, I, yeah, I got a couple so of fast. fibers caught there, so I'm just loosen them. Okay. I don't know if you noticed them or not, but they were there. There's an old fly called a Loch Orbe. And most people now know that style of fly as a bi-visible. So much so that the damned English even call the Loch Orbe bi-visible. And the reason it's bi-visible is because it's got two hackles on it. And one being lighter than the rest of the body. I tend to finish with a cream or a white. It sticks out, causes a wee bit more water disturbance. Causes a wee bit of noise. We can't hear it. It'd be great if we could, it would save a lot of time and trouble. Hmm. That's why they call them by. Not they were from San Francisco. I never use a whip finish tool. I can't stand the things. Savage. <laughs> well, when you consider. Right now I'm doing a whip finish and by the time you pick a tool up, it's done. That tightens everything, just shocks it all into position. If you want to varnish it, Varnish it. And if you don't, just make sure it's got a good work finish on it. And that's about the size of it.